Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to Reading Rousseau's uh, of Political Economy. Um, today we are finishing up Political Economy, the, the last part, the last section, the conclusion. Uh, we're going to reread a little bit of the previous, and I'll listen a little bit of the paragraph I think I, I read last time, but I wasn't sure. He goes, um, um, another drawback of personal taxation is that it is uh, uh, felt too heavy a burden and is too uh, and is levied too harshly, which doesn't prevent it from being subject to many unpaid debts because it is easier to hide one's head than one's possessions from the tax rolls and from uh, from and from prosecution. In other words, a personal taxation is that that if it, 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 it is felt as too heavy a burden and level and levied too harshly. It doesn't prevent it from being subject to many unpaid debts, right? Uh, because it's easier to hide one's head than to, uh, 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 than one's possessions from the tax rolls and prosecute in prosecutions, in a sense. Of all of the other kinds of assessments of land tax, the tally or the real estate has always been thought most advantageous in countries where more consideration is given to the amount of proceeds. And, and the certainty of payment then to the least annoyance of people, right? So therefore the, the land tax or the tally or the real, on, a tally on real estate uh, 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 was most advantageous when the, uh, uh, given, the, uh, uh, given the amounts of proceeds and certainty payments are least annoyance for people. Some even have dared to say that the peasant must be burdened to, uh, must be burdened to rouse him from his laziness and that he would do nothing if he had nothing to pay. But experience among all the peoples of the world belly this ridiculous maxim, and that's answer, right? The idea is that there was experience for everyone. Um, uh, it is in Holland and England where the farmer pays very little, and above all in China where he pays nothing, that land is best cultivated. On the contrary, everywhere th that the farmer is assessed in proportion to the yields of his field, he lets it lie foul and reaps only exactly what he needs to live. This is because anyone who loses, uh, this is because anyone who loses the fruit of his labor, it is a gain to do nothing. And placing a fine on work is a strange way to abolish laziness. So these are criticisms of these mechanisms to abolish the finding them and taxing them and work. Whereas that therefore it's not, in other words, tax shouldn't be, now this is a very interesting thing. He's saying that, you know, you shouldn't tax uh, uh, this idea that you have to, to force people to be quit being lazy, tax on penalty. No, that's not the work. And uh, in the countries that do little taxing gets more reform things. And, the, uh, and once you tax farming, uh, crops, yields, then you get less of it because why would you pay more for to get, the, uh, do not, it's, it's a gain, it's, it's in your profit to get nothing. Taxation on land or in wheat, especially when it is excessive, results in two disadvantages so terrible that they eventually will depopulate or ruin all countries in which they uh, is established. Therefore, taxation on land and taxation on wheat destroys everything in that sense. The first comes from the lack of circulation of currency. For commerce and industry attracts all the money from the countryside to the capitals, and since the tax destroys any proportion that might still exist between the farmer's needs and the price of his wheat, money can money always comes in and never returns. So money never goes there. Of this, the richer the town, the more miserable the country. The proceeds from the tally passes from the hands uh, of the prince to or farm a farm uh, a tax farmer into those of the artists and merchants and, grow, uh, uh, and the grower who never receives any but the smallest part is finally exhausted by always paying equal and always receives less. How could a man live if he has only veins and no arteries, or if his arteries only carried his blood to, uh, to within certain inches of his heart? Chardin says that in Persia, the king's duty on foodstuff are also paid in foodstuff. This usage, which Herodotus indicates was practiced long ago in that same country until the time of Darius, 
can prevent the evil of which I have just spoken. This idea of this evil of, of, of make, de, 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 depositing or ruining the, value, uh, the farmer in that sense and depopulate this. The, the, of that. It says 29. Rousseau refers to Chardin's Voyage de Paris for volumes Amsterdam 1745, a work which he cites at, at length in Social Contract 3, Chapter 8. On Herodotus, the History 3, uh, 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 Paragraph 89, Darius, uh, after becoming king, divided his dominions into 20 king governments, calling uh, called by the Persian satraps and doing so appointed governors, he ordained that each uh, each several nation should pay him tribute in the reigns of Cyprus, Cyrus the uh, Cambyses, uh, uh, Cam, uh, 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 Cyrus and Cam, Cambyses. After him, there was no fixed tribute, but payment was made in gifts. It was called, uh, uh, it is by reason of this fixing tribute, and like other ordinances, the Persians called the Darius a huckster. And Cambius the master, and Cyrus the father. For Darius made a petty profit out of everything. Cambius was a harsh, was harsh and arrogant. Cyrus was merciful and ever and ever wrought for their well-being. Um, Rousseau, um, uh, again, this is from Herodotus, right? Uh, again, um, trans no, it's okay, low, low translation, right? Um, Rousseau, apparent innocent. Citation is thus a implicit criticism of monarchy and empire, I must, in that sense. Thus, Persia. Uh, that, that, but unless in Persia, but unless in Persia, the intendants, directors, clerks, and storehouse guardians are a different kind of people than everywhere else. I find it hard to believe that uh, the least bit of all those products ever reach the king. What? Uh, uh, that the wheat do doesn't rot in all the granaries, and that fire doesn't consume most of the storehouse. So therefore, it, 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 it doesn't get to the king, and that it's hard to believe that that these reaches ever reach the king, uh, and and that rot doesn't reach all the granaries, and fire doesn't consume the words. The second disadvantage comes from an apparent advantage, which uh, 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 allows problems to get worse before they're noticed. In other words. This is, this apparent, in other words, they allowed to get worse before they get noticed. This, this is again this apparent advantage. They allowed problems to grow worse before they get noticed. That is, that wheat is a food whose value is not raised by taxes in countries that produce it, so that despite its absolute necessity, the quality is diminished without an increase in price. As a, a result, many people die in hunger, though wheat continues to be cheap. And the farmer alone bears the burden of the tax, which he is, which he has been unable to pass on in the selling price. It must be carefully noted that the same reasoning should not be applied to the tally on real estate, as to uh, as to duties on all merchant uh, um, uh, duties on all mer mer merchandise, whose price is thereby increased and which are th uh, therefore paid not so much by the merchants as by the buyers. For these duties, however large they may be, are nevertheless voluntary and are only paid by the merchant in proportion to the merchandise he buys. And since he only buys in proportion to his sales, he dictates the laws to private individuals. But the farmer who neither uh, ne uh, for the farmer who, whether he sells or not, is constrained to pay a set price the land he cultivates is not a ma is not the master to wait until the market value of his product attains the price he wants, and even if he weren't to sell it to support himself, he would be forced to sell it to pay the tally. So sometimes, if the enormity of the assessment that maintains the product, at, in other words, it's the enormity of the assessment that maintains the product at a very low price. So therefore, it's the tax creates the property of that law and keeps the farmer poor. So therefore, difference between tax, the tax on levy of land, the levy of the of the tally on the land, um, uh, forces the uh, and the a, a tally of what is the production number, amount of grain, right? Tally on the amount of grain he produces. This keeps the thing high, and therefore, because he needs to pay that tax. 
and therefore he has that land, he must produce that grain, therefore that he has to produce that much, and therefore that produces that much lower the price. He could pay he could make less, but then he would be in trouble because he has to uh, he has to pay more. In other words, he has more land than that. Notice further that the resource of commerce and industry, far from making the tally more bearable by the abundance of money, only renders it more burdensome. In other words, the more money, therefore inflation. This is, I think this is talking about inflation here. The result of commerce and industry, far from making the tally more bearable by more money, it renders it more burdensome. I should not dwell on a very obvious point, namely, although a greater or lesser quality of money in a state can give it more or less credit externally, it, it in no way alters the real wealth of the citizens and does not make them any more or less well off. In other words, in other words that more capital, more money and less money, is that the wealth is still there, that the external wealth is, you know, um, it's not going to make them any more or less well off. But I shall make two important remarks. One, that unless the state has surplus food stuff, an abundance of money comes from foreign sales. In other words, in other words unless food state has supply and, and, and the abundance of money comes from the foreign sales of these, the commercial towns are the only place to enjoy this abundance, and the peasants only become relatively poor. So therefore, this, it, it, in other words, that unless the state has surplus of foodstuffs and abundance of food, uh, the, and the abundance of money comes from foreign sales of this. The commercial towns are, enjoy the abundance, not the peasants. The peasants become poorer. In other words, that since the price of all things raise as money multiplies, taxes too must raise proportionally, so that the farmer finds himself more burdened without having more resources. Um, it should be apparent that the tally on lands is actually a tax on their product. Right? The tallies on land are actually the tax on the product. Well, everyone agrees that nothing is so dangerous as a tax on wheat paid by the buyer. How can it be ignored that it, uh, that the, the evil is a hundred times worse when the tax is paid by the grower itself? Isn't this attacking the source of the state's sub -sub subsistence? Isn't it working directly as uh, isn't it working as directly as possible to depopulate the country and consequently to ruin it in the long run? For uh, there is no worse scarcity for a nation than that of men. So there was this idea of making it difficult for men, making it grow, can't feed the food, can't keep it like this. Therefore, this is the ruin of a nation. Scarcity of the, of the nation is that of men. Only the true statements is able to raise his sight above the financial obligation and setting tax base to transform burdensome obligations into useful regulations about policy and to make people wonder whether such establishments have not had as their end the good of the nation rather than the proceed of taxation. So again, this is his point. In other words, it's, 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 it's very good that, you know, the objective of the tax base is to transfer the burdensome into useful regulations. So the burden is now something beneficial to them. This burden, this, re this burdensome regulation, this burdensome uh, obligation is now so benefit to them they think it's it's not really uh, that therefore this is this uh, the, the the thing that they're paying is producing this big beautiful thing the duties and the importation of foreign merchandise which the inhabitants are eager to have but the country does not need on the exportation of domestic merchandise of which the country has no excess and which foreigners cannot do without uh, so therefore, that you know, you know countries you know, exportation of domestic merchant uh, 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 export. In other words, inhabit foreign mer importation of foreign merchandise, we, which we uh, 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 the inhabitants are eager to have but don't need. Want to, to to the exportation of domestic merchandise, which the country has in excess, and which the foreigners cannot do without, on the production of frivolous and over art. Right, three. On the uh, on the entry into towns of things that are pure and uh, amenities, and in such and in general on every object of luxury, will all uh, uh, of luxury will all fulfill this double purpose. Such taxes, which f help the poor and burden the rich, must be used to prevent the continued increase of inequality of fortunes, and the subjugation to the rich of a multitude of workers. And a useless servant and useless servants. 
the multitude of idle people in towns and the destruction of the countryside. It is important um, uh, to establish a proportion between the price of things and the duty to be paid on them, such that the greediness of private individuals is, is, is not to be tempted to fraud by the size of profits. Therefore, you be careful. The pro In other words, the high profits, success profits. And therefore, you need to make the taxes, and in other words, a bird, you know, the the uh, uh, um, the prices of things and the duties paid on things need to be to, to, not to tempt the fraud of this uh, on the size of profit. The ease of contraband must also be prevented by, by giving preference to merchandise that is at least easy to hide. Finally, it is appropriate for the tax to be paid by the consumer of all tax ar ar articles rather than that of the seller who would rather who would have more temptations and means to use fraud due to the numbers of duties charged them. this is the normal practice in china a country in the world where taxes are the heaviest the best paid the merchants pay nothing the buyer alone pays the duty without giving rise to either protest or sedition because since the food since be, uh, because since the vital foodstuffs such as rice and wheat are abs are absolutely exempt, the people are not downtrodden. The tax falls only on those who are well to do, buying stuff, goods and services, Lux luxury taxes in that sense, right? This is like a luxury tax fundamentally in that sense, a tax on the goods and things that we uh, we like to do. Moreover, all of these precautions would not be dictated so much by fear of counterband as by the attention to the government should give in protecting the private individual from the seduction of illegitimate profits, which, after creating bad citizens, would not be long in turning them into dishonest people. In other words, this idea that too much attention to profit, and therefore to, uh, that gives them practice a, a, a private institution to get seduced by illegitimate profits. So, therefore, creating after creating bad citizens, and that's it, because they would they would find ways to cheat and things like that. And would not make tournament no soul into bad people, cheaters. Let high taxes be placed on liveries, on carriages, on mirrors, chandeliers, and furnishing, on clothes and gilding, um, uh, on the courtyards and gardens of mansions, on theoretical performances, the the uh, theatrical performances of a kind, on the idle professions, such as those of buffoons, singers, or actors. In short, on the masses of objects of luxury, derision, and idleness. That are all uh, that are visible to all and can scarcely be hidden, because their only use is display, and they would be useless if they were not seen. So they're for luxury tax. Anything that luxury, anything that idleness, and it should be, should have high taxes on it, um, uh, because they wouldn't uh, because their only use is being seen. He says, no other use. There is no need to worry about. That the proceeds of such taxes would be unpredictable because they are only based on things that are not absolute necessities. It is a great misunderstanding of men who believe that once once seduced by luxury, it can never uh, uh, they can never renounce it. So therefore, they, in other words, they can never renounce it. They, 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 this is a mis an error, and he says they would a hundred times sooner renounce necessity. Then would prefer to die of hung uh, and would prefer to die of hunger than of shame, right? This idea that, that they'd rather die of shame, and, then a sh and it, therefore the luxury is vanity in that, and they would have shame for that sense. Um, the increased expense will merely be a new reason to sustain it, and the vanity of displaying opulence will benefit from both the price of the object and the expense of taxation. As long as they're rich men, uh, they will want to distinguish themselves from the poor, and the state could not create a less burdensome and more secure revenue than based on this distinction. They were showing off. You want to, I want, if you want to show off, you want to be big, then you're going to pay for it. You have to pay taxes to it, and they should be very high. For the same reason, industry would not suffer in the least from economic order uh, uh, from an economic order that enriched public finances uh, 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 received our uh, re revived agriculture by relieving the farmers and gradually brought all fortunes closer to them but that moderation that creates a true force of state in other, words, in, other words, in other words the true force of the state is the moderate types so therefore that they're powerful and they're by the law and they will do, they'll be the uh, good citizens 
and therefore that therefore all fortune all fortune fortunes closer to that of moderation. It, uh, it could happen, I admit, that these taxes might contribute to making some fashions disappear more rapidly. But this would never occur without the substitution of others from which the workers would profit without any loss to the public treasury. In short, one of two things will happen if we suppose that government that the government's tendency is constantly to place all taxation on the surplus of wealth. Either the rich will renounce their superfluous expenses in favor of useful ones, which will redound to the state's profit. In other words, either the rich will do this. In that case, the tax base will have a will have produced the best of the sumptuary, uh, the best, the, 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 produce the effect of the best sumptuary laws. The expenses of the state will necessarily have diminished along with those of private individuals and the public treasury could not thereby diminish any less without having still less to pay out. Or that's, that's one thing, the first thing, that's the first thing, that. Or if the rich do not diminish their extravagance, the public treasury will in the proceeds from taxes, the resources it sought to provide for the real needs of the state. In other words, they get all this wealth and all this, they'll get the taxes of this. Either they reduce this and they reduce the costs, or they will, uh, these, their spending will produce the money that they'll need for the state, uh, the real needs of the state. In the first case, the, pu the public treasury is enriched by all the reductions of it in the, its expenses. In the second, it will likewise enrich by the frivolous expenses of private individuals. Let us add uh, 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 to all of this an important dis distinction of political right, to which governments anxious to do everything by themselves should pay much attention. So everyone, this, this, is not, this is a very important point, a distinction, uh, important distinction of political right, which uh, governments are doing by themselves should pay attention to. I have said that since personal taxation and taxes on absolute necessity directly attacks the right to property, and consequently the true basis of social political society. They are always subject to dangerous consequences if they are not established with the express consent of the people or its representatives, right? You know, so you're going to tax property, you're not tax property or tax it either directly or indirectly, you got to have consent. Uh, 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 okay, this is, again, compares note above, right? About uh, note 27 above on this point. Um, The same does not hold true for duties on things whose can whose use can be can be forbidden. From uh, for then, since the private individual is not absolutely constrained to pay, his contribution can be considered voluntary. So the private consent of each of the taxpayer replaces the general consent, and even presupposes it in a general in, in a way. For why would people? For why would people be opposed to the assessment of any tax that falls only on anyone who is willing to pay it? Right. This is that. Uh, it, uh, uh, it appears con uh, certain to me that whatever is net need, in other words, certain to me that that whatever is neither prescribed by the laws nor contrary to the mores, and that the government uh, and that the government can forbid it can per it can permit subject to the payment of a duty. So in other words, as long as it doesn't uh, doesn't is not something that really prescribed by laws, nor is contrary to the mores, um, and that the government can forbid. It can, in other words, as long as it's neither prescribed by the specific laws nor are contrary to the mores, things that government can forbid, it can also permit the payment of a tax. For example, the government can forbid the use of carriages. It can with all the more reason impose a tax on carriers, which may, which is a wise and useful way to blame without use, uh, uh, use their use without ending it. The tax can be considered a kind of fine. Whoever proceeds compensates for the, uh, for the abuse it punishes. Someone may object that since those whom, um, since those whom Bodin calls imposters, um, uh, 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 that is, those who impose or invent the forms of taxation are in the class of the rich. 
they will not take care to spare others at their own expense and burden themselves in order to pay or to relieve the poor. In other words, they're not going to do this. They're going to, they're of the same class as that. They have the same interests, he says, as William argues. Um, Rousseau again refers to Bodin, six, uh, six lives, uh, six books of the Republic, book six, chapter two. Thus, the most important, uh, uh, most imposers and inventors of new taxes have lost their lives at it. Um, one critic has put it, this last paragraph is a, is a finished piece of irony in that sense. This is irony. Vaughn Va Va said this is, this is great irony. Uh, so therefore, impossible. So many objects that would have done this because why? They, they're gonna what you know because you know the uh, inventors, the forms of taxation, the class that they're gonna do this. Uh, but such ideas to be rejected, he says. But such ideas must be rejected if in in each nation those who whom the sovereign commits the government of the people were its enemies by definition, there would be no point in seeking what these men should do to make the people happy. They're going to make everybody happy. If they're the really enemy, if they hate the people, if they, if they were its enemies by definition. So you can't, you must reject this position, if you this, this claim by put in. If, the, if these people are, uh, are, are really, they hate, they, they, they're, not, they're not going to, they're going to, be, they're going to be, they're going to see them as enemies. Then, and then it's lost. You're in trouble. It's, it's like this. Well, that's it. We're, we're, this ends our thing. This ends our time. If you have any comments or questions, please put them below. And I, I'll see them. I will re uh, respond to them. If you liked it, like it, hit the like button, share it uh, 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 on social media, share it with others, um, um, tell your friends about it. Um, if you didn't like it, of course, you can say, no, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Well, say why in the comments. Maybe we can all learn from it. What, maybe I got something wrong, what I got wrong or something like this. Another thing is, um, uh, uh, if you've not subscribed, do please do subscribe. I like to grow the channel. That's a, it's a useful way to do this, to grow a channel. So, so indicate to a friend, recommend it to a, a friend of yours. Uh, next but not least is what? Um, um, you can follow me on social media. Links are below. Um, you can um, um, you can also follow me my my research as a scholar and like that and my academic social media below the, the, the social media links and then last but not least if you want to help me to do what I do do what I do what you do what you do um, uh, you can be, be, uh, become a become a patreon uh, do patreon or subscribe star um, it's you know uh, this is the way that you can help uh, I don't I'm not I don't get uh, I'm not monetized. I'm too small. Um, uh, if I was monetized, you got a, a bigger button, a bigger button. Please give a little uh, copper coin for the uh, thing. That's because it's, it's uh, and I think I don't have many. I don't have anyone I like anymore. I had one for one time that he, he was there, and then he, his, I think he just wanted to give you five bucks. Um, it really didn't work. Um, so that's that. It. I I I I props should stop the money requesting uh, but it's, it's it'd be useful uh take care um again this was on you know this ends the thing or so i i don't know what, but I, i'll be making up my mind soon but you know i have a, I, I have probably december we'll start something new okay we'll take care and have a good day uh, of course tuesdays are tuesdays and thursdays schmidt we'll be finishing schmidt i think at the same time in that sense um, at the end of, you know, by December in that sense. So I think we're going to start December. And I might do something else. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Well, take care. Again, again, Fridays are always live stream or a, a recording of a, a book show or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's all it's kind of short. What is up? What is up? Well, take care. Bye-bye. Have a good day. See you later. Take care.